Today is September 24th, 2015. We're interviewing William Hunt at Grand Prairie. Bill is 92 years old. He was born on 327-23. My name is Stan Spear and I'll interview. Rita Corson will be the court reporter. When and where were you born? Bushnell, Illinois, Route 1. Five miles west of Bushnell. Mm -hmm. uh, were your parents of farmers or what was their occupation back in that time? Farmers. Did you farm with them or help them? Well, when I was a kid, but we all worked on the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, how many siblings did you have? Four boys and three girls. Remember their names? Well, let's see, there was Mary was the oldest, Fanny was the second, Orville was the third, and then me, and then Carl, and Ruby, mm -hmm. the baby. Spoiled. Is that right? Did any of the brothers serve in the military? <clears throat> any of my brothers? Uh, I think Orville was, I don't know if he's in the military or what. He worked in a junkyard out in Maryland, it's supposed to be tied with the military. He volunteered for it, so I don't know whether he was in the military. But they sent back the junk scrap from parts of the, where the war was, and they was dismantling it and saving parts. Okay. Um, what about your other brother? Wayne. He was in the Merchant Marines. And Carl? He didn't go in until after the war was over. And what was he in? I think just the regular service. Just the army? Uh, yeah, yeah. That would have been what, the Korean War? No, I don't think there's any wars on when he was in. And you were in what service? Navy. You was a Navy. Mm -hmm. What were you doing before you entered the service? I was working in Detroit at uh, Ford Motor Company. Was you married at that time? Yeah. Do you have any children? I have one daughter. And when you went to the military, was there a war going on? Yeah. And uh, when you went to service, what was your rank and what did you achieve? I accomplished seaman first. That was that's where you started and that's where you finished. Sure, I finished and started. The only way you could get if somebody got killed in your unit <clears throat> or died, you could move up one. And uh, I went in seaman first and come out of seaman first. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. Can you remember when you enlisted in the service? I don't know the exact date. My memory's not that good anymore. <clears throat> Can you remember the year? Well, that had to be 43 or 44, wasn't it? Something like that. I couldn't swear to it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you got out? Yeah, I was in the uh, Philippines when I got out. Okay. That's when they sent me home for discharge. Did you say you was enlisted or was you drafted? I enlisted. Okay. Was you married when you uh, enlisted? Mm-hmm. Okay. Single when I come out. <laughs> Do you remember your first days of service? Well, I don't. I, there's so many days there that it's hard to figure which was the first day. Did you leave from Bushnell and go where? Where did you go first? I was in Detroit when I listed, mm -hmm. and I came to Illinois, and and they sent me down to the office there in Macomb, and I went through there and then sent me back up to Chicago. Sent me out and went to Milwaukee for tra boot training. Okay. What did you think of that? How did you feel about that first days of service? <clears throat> well, there wasn't much to do except listen to the Gaffer get up there and give big speeches and stuff, you know. Hmm. Where did you get stationed? For boot camp and then your first training camp after that? Milwaukee. And then where was your first training camp? That was my training camp, Milwaukee. Oh, I thought that, that wasn't your boot camp, the boot camp and training camp? Yeah. Okay. 
after your training, where did you go then? Went to California and then we went over to, let me think of the place where it's at. I mean, my memory's not what it used to be, but I come up with something. Right? Well, after your training camp, did they give you time off? Yeah, I got a one week to go home and get back. Did you go to Detroit or did you go to Bushnell? I went to Bushnell. And then your first assignment, you went where? California? Yeah. You remember where? <clears throat> San Diego. Do you recall your instructor? No. You don't remember your first instructor? No, I don't. Do you receive specialized training at your school? Did they train you to do something? We were, uh, we were landed troops on the beach. We did exercises. We took exercise like that to retrain. How to get, to get on the beach and get off and try to be still alive. You drove the boat in, did you? No, I was a machine gunner on the right hand side. Was there anybody shooting at you coming in? No, because of the guns up behind us were shooting over us, knocking them back away from the beach. Okay. What beach was that? Do you remember? Mm, Saipan, Tinian, somewhere around there. So you was fighting the Japanese then? Yeah. But you didn't have to stay on the beach? You went back to the ship? with your boat, you just brought guys in and then you went back. Yeah, right. We took uh, GIs in to run down the beach and we went back to the ship. But you didn't stay and fight yourself. You didn't have to fight. No, we didn't stay there. We just hauled them out there on the island. Okay. On the beach. How'd you uh, adapt to the military life? <laughs> There's no adapting to it. You do what you're told and shut up. <laughs> How did you, how did you like the physical part of it and the barracks and the food and the social life? Well, it wasn't too bad. We survived on it. What would you, you do at night, you know, when you had time off? Was you on the ship? Well, let's see, where was I? My memory is as good as it used to be. Let's see. I can't remember that part. Do you remember what kind of food you had? What did they serve you? Well, I must have been on ship because they cooked the food. Oh, okay. You didn't have sea rations? No, not all the time. We did have part-time, but not all the time. And your job assignment, you was a gunner? Yeah, I was a gunner. Was it during the war? It was wartime? Yeah. And where did you serve at? Philippines, Saipan, Tinian. You remember arriving there and what was you thinking when you got there? <laughs> I wondered what was going to happen there. You know. Was it summertime or wintertime? Uh, I believe it was in the summertime. Was it pretty hot weather then? Uh, more as far as I know. Do you have any special memories of it? when you went off the ship and landed on the land? But surely you was on the, the land once in a while, weren't you? Well, we took, uh, we had a small boat and we hauled the GIs in uh, to the beach, as close to the beach as we could. And then uh, we would let them off and go back and get another load. How long was you there? Like a month or two months? No, we just load them off and then we go back to the ship. Got other than the Navy. And then would you go back, take the ship and go back and get more GIs and do the same thing? No, they'd send us a different place and pick up stuff. Like that. Is that was in Japan or where was it? The Philippines? Or? The Philippines was most of it. But you, was that, did you take those guys to the front line? Was we this the front the, line? No, we took them to the beach and they went to the front line because the guns had hammered them back away from the beach. 
did you actually witness people getting shot and people shooting? No, but we could hear them. We were that close to the, to the beach to where they were. We could hear them firing. But we wasn't in, we wasn't in fighting fallen down. Did you ever have to take people back that had casualties? Did anybody get back on your little ship and ride back that had been shot? No, I didn't. I didn't have any, but some of the others did. <clears throat> did you make a lot of friends? Well, the hundred had friends and enemies. Yeah. But I mean, did you ever keep in touch with anybody? No, not after I got out. So you didn't stay in touch with anybody, huh? Did, how did you keep in touch with your family back then? I didn't. Oh, you didn't write letters or correspond with you your mom? You didn't get any mail. Is that right? What did you do for recreation, you know? Not much of anything. I'll tell you the truth about it. Did you have to stand guard on the ship? Yeah. Did you? We was in the Philippines and uh, we'd have to stand guard there because the gooks would come out there with a bucket over their head and swim around with that until they could breathe and try to blow holes in the ship we was on. What kind of ship was it? You remember what, the, what they called the ship? LST Landing Craft. Was that how many people was on that? A hundred or two hundred or? I'd say probably a hundred, hundred and fifty. I see. Did you ever receive any medals or citations or honors? Well, I got some kind of stuff. I don't know where, what happened to it. I don't have it anymore. Did you receive that when you was getting out of the service? or yeah. Do you remember where you got that at? Chicago. In Chicago, I got this shirt. Mm -hmm. Do you remember who gave you the medals? No, I don't remember any names. Was there a ceremony when the, when you got the medals? Was you the only one or was there other people? No, there were other people there. Mm -hmm. Was it a big ceremony? I didn't hear anything. They just handed out the medals and said, here's your decorations for what you did for serving. I don't know where they are. I don't know what ever happened to them. Was the war ending when you come home? Yeah, the war ended when I was in the Philippines. How did you hear about it? Over, uh, they had a loudspeaker there, and the unit I was in, they pronounced it over the loudspeaker. So the war was over? Yeah. Huh. Where well, were you at that time when you heard that? In the Philippines. On the ship? No, I was, I was on, on the beach in the Philippines when they pronounced that. Was you ever anywhere where they were setting off the nuclear bombs or the attack? Did you ever go anywhere where there was anything? Yeah, where they dropped that big bomb. I, I was there. It just cleared everything. There was nothing more than two feet high. And where was that at? Where they dropped that big bomb. Yeah, where was that? I can't remember the name of the place. But I was there. Was you afraid about getting radiation? I did get radiation. Oh, you did? Yeah. Did you get sick with it? Well, I had enough radiation to give me treatments with it for a bit. How did they know you had radiation then? The tests in front of a Geiger counter or something there. Well, you wasn't the only one then, was you? No, not exactly. How did they take the radiation out of you? We didn't have that much in us, but we had enough that they had machines that they run by, that they run by. Full of them. What they let you off the ship for on the island or the everywhere it was to get that radiation? Why did they do that? Do you remember? Was you looking for something? No, it's just, it was just a That's where they dropped the, the atomic bomb. How how? Before they dropped it, how how long afterwards was you there after they dropped the bomb? It's only a matter of days. And nobody was alive? No. Well, nothing more than about two feet high. How did you return home then? From Japan? Did they fly you home? Uh, no, I came back by ship. I was... 
It took me about 30 days to get home back to San Diego. Mm -hmm. I was on a LST. They only travel about five or six miles an hour. Something like that. I think that's what they said. How long did you have to stay in San Diego? I was only there a couple of days. They had questions and answers and stuff. And then they sent me into Chicago. Did they check you more for radiation and check you over still again? They might have, but I don't remember that. No. How did you get to Chicago? A train. Was it just you or was it more than you? No, well, there's different ones there. Three or four of us coming together. Mm -hmm. Did you stay in Chicago very long or what did you do then? No, I went to Chicago. I went to the uh, station and caught the. What did we catch out? We caught some out of Chicago and came into McComb. Was your family waiting for you? No. You got off the train where? Galesburg or Bushnell or Macomb? And, uh, train at uh, Bushnell, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then what did you do? Walk home? Nobody knew you was coming? I, I called my, my mother and uh, they come pick me up. Oh, okay. How did you adjust back to civilian life? Was that uh, pretty easy? I, uh, yeah, once you got back, you know, you just accepted it as it was and let it go to that. Did you uh, stay around Bushnell or did you do something else then? Oh, I don't remember that. No, I went back to Detroit because I was working at Ford Motor Company up there. <clears throat> back on my old job. And what did you do in Detroit? Assembly on different parts that went into the cars and stuff. And did you stay at that uh, job very long? No. Oh, yeah, I think I was there about two years. Mm-hmm. And then you had a daughter here in Bushnell then, huh? Mm -hmm. She's with her mother. Okay. For a while, then my mother went and picked her up because they were doing things they shouldn't be doing. Uh-huh. Did you did you belong to any veteran clubs or organization? No, I never joined any. So when you left the military, you went back to Detroit and worked in the car plants. And then what else did you do after that? You didn't retire from there, did you? No. I got tell you, trade mind, I don't remember anything on that. Did you, did you work for any family members or? Cousins or brothers? What was that? Did you work for your brother or sisters or any family members? Driving a truck or anything? I drove a truck for my brother. How long did you do that for? Oh, I really couldn't tell you. Probably a year and a half, two years. Did you ever carry anything when you was in the service for good luck? No. Did you have uh, plenty of supplies on that ship? Did you ever run close to out of food? Did you ever get hungry or have to eat sea no. rations? We, we had supply ships out there that you go to and with a small boat off of it and pick up your supplies, so we never run out of supplies. What kind of food did they serve you? Oh, just regular stuff. Not steaks. Did you get steak? No. For breakfast, did you have eggs or chow or what they have? What they call it back then? For breakfast. We did. I don't know. They had they had a supply ship out there with all the food on it that we got, and we'd take the small boat over and pick up a load of it. Oh, okay. Bring it back. Did you have any entertainment when you was in the military? Did you have any? Yeah, big, we had. Some movie stars or something come out there for a couple hours and dance and sang and laughed and this and that. You can't remember who that was back then, huh? No. Okay. What did you do for entertainment when you wasn't working with some buddies on the ship? What would you do? Wasn't much to do with anything. 
did you could you listen to radio? Did you have radio then? I don't remember that. <clears throat> uh, see, I didn't read it. We cleaned the guns usually. Oh, I, I was on the LSD. We had forty millimeter guns. Twin guns. What was that called? The little things that went out in the water that you was on. What was that called? Those little boats. LCVPs. How many people would it haul? Oh, probably 15, 12, 15 people, maybe a little more. And the front end let down when they got in shallow water as far as they could go in. And then you had to wade in the rest of the way. How many gunners were on that? You was on the right side, you I was said. On the starboard side, yeah, right side. And was there one on the other side too? Yeah. And then they had the guy that drove the boat. Yeah. And they'd have about, oh, I suppose, 15, maybe 18 people, GIs, in there. <clears throat> Did they give you any leave? Like uh, any time off while you was in a service to go somewhere or do anything? No. Did you travel while you was in the service? Did you go anywhere when you was in over there? Did you uh, see anything you like to tell us about? A lot of that I don't remember about. I know was when I was in the Philippines, we used to go down to a little, little town there, little, some recreation they had there, but I don't remember all about that either. Did you go down there with a buddy, or did you yeah. kind of have a couple of buddies you'd run around with? Yeah, we never went by ourselves. We always had somebody with us. Well, that's what I wondered. That's what I've always been told. You're yeah. supposed to travel in pairs or foursomes. Yeah, that's right. Did you guys ever run into any trouble? No. Do you recall the day that uh, the service ended, and where was you when they said, uh, it's time to go home? I think I was in the Philippines. And they announced it, just said, Bill, you're going home? No. They just come in and said the war was over. Oh, okay. Well, did you still have time to serve, or did that mean that you was out of the service? Well, I just volunteered for the, for the time. It took. Was and you in for two years or three? Well, it's more or less a two-year period, but, but they let me out as soon as ever the war was over. Oh, they did? You didn't have to fill your whole time then, huh? No. I volunteered for two years. Were you discharged by yourself, or was there anybody else that uh, left? There was others, but I don't remember who they were. They sent us into Chicago with us, I think San Diego, when we landed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you got back to San Diego and went to Chicago. That was a train full of military men. There was quite a few on it. Did you like Chicago? Did you think about staying in Chicago? No, I didn't want to stay in Chicago. Them big cities are a good place to be from. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you got out of the service, you resumed your old job. Is that right? You went back to Detroit? Yeah. And they put me back on the same job I was on. Same job. Wow. Did you go to any type of school? Did they type, try to train you? Did you have a GI Bill or anything? No. They had it, but I didn't accept it. And what I was doing, I was happy with what I was doing. So. Did you ever use any military benefits or get checked over when you was younger? Did anything ever happen to you or is anything wrong with you? No, not that I know of. Got a little radiation from something, but I can't figure out where we got that. Where they dropped the bomb. Mm -hmm. We was in that area too quick, I guess. An officer took some of us. We wanted to see where they dropped the bomb and everything. <clears throat> and it was, wasn't nothing more than about that high where they dropped the bomb. Big buildings were leveled. Yeah, everything was leveled. How big a town was it? Was it a big well, city? I don't know how big a city it was to start with. But with the area that we was in was pretty well leveled out far away and then it came back up to normal. So. Wow. Well, looking back on your military time, how did your military time experience affect your life? I don't want to part of it. Huh? 
I know I'm the fire. Look, look. It did the military time didn't change you, make you a better person or well follow you directions have to better. Think for yourself. You don't let other people think for you, and you don't volunteer for nothing. You don't raise your hand in the military? No. When they want to volunteer, you keep your mouth shut. Well, was there any life <coughs> lessons that you could tell somebody that you learned from the military? Was it a good experience to learn, to get you in line, or straighten people up? Well, I, after I was in there a little while, I sat and listened, and I figured that's the best thing to do. Just keep quiet and listen. Because sometimes these guys would say something and it would come back at them, you know. Mm -hmm. So you just sit and listen, don't say nothing. Well, what did you think about war after you saw it? It was not a good place to be. Did you agree with it? I guess it was necessary or they wouldn't have sent us there. Do you remember anybody of your commanders when you was in the service? Do you remember any of the names? No, Generals or militaries or colonels or? No, I don't remember the names. No. They were all pretty good guys though. What message would you like to say to somebody that's looking at this in the future and future generations? When they hear you, what would you like to tell somebody about your life or in general what to Message, would you like to tell them about the military or war or anything? Well, somebody's got to do it, but I wouldn't volunteer. <laughs> well, is there anything that we've talked about that you can think about that you'd like to say? Well, I hope I didn't say anything that would discourage people from doing their job. But Everybody's an individual and they're all different, so you have to come up with your own ideas and stuff, what you want or try to want. Mm -hmm. Because when you get in there, you don't have to volunteer. They'll tell you where to go and what to do and when to do it. You know? Did they treat everybody equal? Yeah, pretty well. Did you have women in the service when you was in the service in World War II? I don't remember being in any group where there was women. Did you ever have any Indians, any groups like that? You know, something that you hadn't been around? Like, uh, I've read that there's some Navajos and, you know, uh, smoke readers or ever what? Uh, Did in you the Philippines, hear? In the Philippines, they uh, had the natives, which didn't have any clothes. They just run around naked. Kids, you know, wife and husband and kids. Parts of the Philippines they didn't, they didn't have any clothing. And uh, houses, they put two sticks in the ground with a fork on it, you know, and then lay one across and put it out and throw leaves and <clears throat> leaf branches and stuff over for shade, and that was just shelters. Did you ever have to stay out in tents or anything yourself? No. You never did? You could always go back to the ship at night or? No, no there was no ship there. I was on the ship and when we was on the ground, when we stayed there until we got ready to go back. And then they picked us up with us, now let's see. Oh, you didn't ever have to stay in town or anything, no. even in the Philippines. You no. could always go back to the ship. Yeah. Right. Huh. <clears throat> well. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Bill. Um, I hope I got as straight as I could. Well, it said that you were in the 20th, U.S. Navy, the 20th. You got out February of 46, and you went 8-18th of 1944. So, Great Lakes. Do you remember your pay at all? <laughs> $28 a month. $28 a month. Did you spend it all in one place? I imagine it could have. Did you, did you save any money? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. By the time you go down there, get, you get a break and get a, get a chance to go on leave or something, you go down to the beer garden and drink it up. Well, it, how much was a beer? Wasn't too much. Can you remember? Because everybody that? wanted to buy you a beer. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. 
All right. Well, thank you, William F. Hunt, for your service in the military. Uh, my duty. Well, thanks for doing your duty then. <laughs>